So uh, we're here in the, at the demo Friday. So did you succeed? Did you make the desktop? Oh yes, we made some very nice demos, and the uh, desktop is one of them. As you can see here, it looks like a normal desktop box, and it acts like a normal desktop box. And that's the one with the quad core A72. Yeah. You can even play some 3D games on it if you want to. So. All with open graphics drivers, open firmware, not as a piece of proprietary. Uh, 100% open? Yes. There's nothing closed. Nothing closed. And it's a Radeon GPU? Um, we have several GPUs running. Originally it was a Radeon, but that broke down during testing, probably of overheating. Right now it has an NVIDIA GPU with the new driver. Which has some open drivers. Right? Yes. That's what it's running, so... Not as many as a Radeon. Yes, the Radeon open drivers are in much better shape right now. And so this is a Macchiato bin, a Marvel. What do you think about right. this performance? Are you getting stuff? Can you, can yeah. you be uh, building all your code with this? The performance is pretty good. I managed to build a kernel uh, with pretty much all config options enabled as modules in less than 10 minutes, which is not great, but... Uh, but Definitely quite good for, uh, for an ARM box. How fast do you build it with your Thunder X2? Uh, I'm joking with the Intel. <laughs> How long does it take with the Intel thing? It takes around uh, three minutes. Three minutes. So right now you're ten minutes. Yeah. And uh, we still have a bit of catching up to do, but this is perfectly usable. And uh, can you show the windows? What are, what are you doing here and there and there? Yeah, here essentially I'm just showing what it is. So it's an r 64 box, uh, and it's running mainline kernel for uh, for 14. Here it's just uh, showing the processor usage. Um, so CPUs are not exactly overloaded. Mm, uh, there's also still lots of memory available. Yeah, and here's just a little 3D game for demonstration. That what's what's the type of Linux you have running on there? That's Open and Reaver, my personal favorite. You always use that? Whenever I can. I mean, there's a couple of specific use cases where other things do better, like if I want to go to an extremely low-end device, I'd probably start with Open Embedded. If I want to build a phone, I'd probably use Android because of the apps. But for most things, I really like Open and Reaver. And uh, one of the nice things about it is that it's a very flexible team, so we could, for example, move the default compiler to Clang without having to spend months or years discussing it in committees or something. Let's check your arm part laptop. Yeah. So that one you have too, right here? That is essentially running the same stuff. Um, it's not yet quite on 4.14, but kernel 4.11 is also not that old. It's also ready to run some light 3D stuff. Mm, the, uh, Can you open so it up? This, this is the one you, is, you, should, you open? Yeah, let's open it up. So you can see it's originally a Pi top, but I've replaced the inside because the Pi is just too slow for a regular desktop. So instead of the Pi, we are powering it with the Dragon Boat 820. And that required a couple of other changes. Like we also built in another SSD, so we have a couple of terabytes of storage. Two terabytes? Yeah. And what's over there on the left? Um, that's just the output from launching the game. Uh, so, so nothing overly interesting. I mean, here. Ah, that? That's actually an interesting part that comes with the Pi top. So this essentially takes the HDMI output of the board and the uh, input events from the keyboard and uh, touchpad and translates them into signals the hardware you can understand. So the screen is not an HDMI display, but it's powered by the HDMI port and the keyboard and touchpad just arrive as regular USB devices. So you, your laptop is pretty uh, pretty big. Can you fit a Macchiato bin in there? That would be fun. Uh, Can you fit the Kavium sure. Thunder X2 or the new Totem server? That's a good one. That's a really good one. I'm really looking forward to uh, get home. getting hold of it, but chances are I'll never get hold of it. Those things are just too expensive. Can you build a cooling system that would fit in your Predator laptop? 
I'm pretty sure because in the, there's an i7 in there and uh, that gets hotter than uh, you can fry even the biggest. Right? Yes. You can cook. That's the, that's the system you use for cooking at home. Yes, right. right. So oh, when I want awesome. to cook, I just uh, put a pan on top of the laptop and I run and make this tray. <laughs> All right. And. Uh, uh, so, so it will happen. You have it right here. You solved it. You have the laptop. You have the desktop. And this is the Lenara Connect 2017. It's a historic day, right? A little bit. Yes. So the desktop is essentially ready because it doesn't have any special parts that need to be built for everything. So. If someone told me I need one right now, I could build one within a day. For the laptop, we need to figure out how we can make it more easily reproducible. We've been talking about this for in videos for the last seven years, or the yes. many years. You've I've been, always been, been saying someone needs to do it. Someone needs to do it. So uh, it. But yeah. All right. But what do you, what more do you need? You want more SOCs, faster SOCs? Mm, yes, it would definitely be nice to have something even faster than this. I think this is good enough for, for most users, but if you really want to uh, heavily build stuff, you probably want an even faster SOC. It would be nice. It's over there. It's a 48 core. Let's jump over here. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's, so there's a Thunder X. Maybe a Thunder X2. Mm -hmm. Somewhere around here is a new fast quantum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 right here. Uh, 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 That's a uh, powerful 48 cores, right? Yeah, and that you would can be build nice to have that at an affordable price, uh, so it could be built into a regular desktop. With nice big chip. Right now, I think. The price is pretty much the blocker for this. With one of those, you can probably build a Linux in uh, one minute. Probably even less. And that would be three times faster than the i7. I wouldn't be surprised. Cool. So that's uh, for the next Linaro Connect, right? That would be fun, but realistically, I don't get access to this type of board. And the guys who do are. Uh, very much focused on the server space, so I don't see them playing around building a desktop machine out of it. And over here you have uh, uh, something that says AOSP TV. Yes, um, that's another demo, but I can't show that right now because we're having bandwidth problems. But the idea there is that um, we take a TV input signal f from a satellite dish or even a terrestrial antenna uh, in Switzerland stream it over the network and play it on AOSP TV right here or wherever we, so wherever you, we want to what be. What have you done with AOSP TV? Uh, you've been working on this a little bit? Yes. So right now, uh, what has already been done is a little disconnected from AOSP TV. Yeah. It's essentially it's implementing good. all the stuff to get uh, signals from DVB, making sure that it's available in code that is licensed in a way that AOSP can accept. Mm. The next <coughs> step there will be integrating it into the AOSP TV interface, uh, so it can be done right from the, uh, the AOSP interface uh, with remote controls instead of typing in commands to get the stream and to uh, play it back. So, uh, so basically it's an open source version of an Android TV? Yes, essentially that's what it is. How much of the Android TV are you able to get into the AOSP TV? Depends on how closely you look at licensing. There's a couple of things you can do to get the full Android TV experience on AOSP, which essentially involves getting the binary plots for the Nexus player and copying them around. But obviously those things aren't licensed very nicely, so the there's more Intel stuff that device. needs to be... Uh, how can yeah. you take the Intel binary blobs and just make them work on ARM things? The thing is, they aren't binary blobs. Uh, most of the stuff in Android TV is implemented in Java. Mm, 
while I'm not the biggest fan of Java, for most things, one of the nice things about it is you can just take code from an x86 box and run it on an ARM box or vice versa. And you also have a special phone. You don't have it right here, no? But yes, you, you, you that's work in, in my hotel room. You, you work on all kinds of different things. Um, yeah, sure. It has to do with Android. I'm very much a believer in something needs to be done. If nobody else is doing it, I'll do it. You do it. So uh, we want the desktop, we do it, but it needs to be smoothed out and let's get it out on the market, right? People need to be able to buy this. Right. And uh, the laptop. Working on that too. Let's get the laptop out so people can buy it, hopefully, and um, and choose any SOC they want. Just plug it in. That's a 96 boards idea, right? Yes, that would be really nice. At the moment, uh, with the laptop, it's not possible because we had to use a different form factor because the particular SOC we wanted in order to get open graphics drivers wasn't available in the, uh, the right form factor, but. That's probably changing in the future. So. And uh, Android has this Project Treble thing going on. Yes, uh, that is really interesting. Maybe thanks to you and thanks to the Narrow, maybe every phone and every Android TV box, every Android everything that gets Android 8 will be updated forever, automatically. That would be nice. I don't really see that happening, but probably it does mean that updates will come a lot faster than before. And Lenaro has a role to play, and you have a role to play. You're working with that stuff, right? Yes. What are you doing with that stuff? So, most of the things Lenaro is doing for it at the moment are related to kernel maintenance. So, one of the things in Treble is uh, standardizing on the LTS kernels to make sure that security updates for the kernels can be delivered to all devices. And those kernels are, for the most part, maintained inside Lenaro. We are also starting to do some user space work to support reference implementations of certain updates and things. But for the most part, our involvement is on the kernel side. So your role is not only in the mobile group, you're also doing stuff in the home group because you're doing the AOSP TV. Yes. But, uh, there is a lot more things to happen in the mobile in the future, even though Android is already the big king, right? It needs to be... Yeah, of course. There needs to be a lot of things um, to happen in mobile group. If Android uh, just stalls, it will probably remain the b uh, best thing there is for, uh, on a mobile for another year or two. But if uh, people stop developing it, if people stop innovating, something else will come up and uh, take over, even if I have to do it. We were talking a bunch of years ago, three years ago, we were talking about... Uh, maybe running uh, Debian or other kind of uh, uh, apps uh, natively on Android. Maybe running, uh, even we were talking about crazy stuff like running Windows on Android. Maybe with a Snapdragon 845, they would be able to dual boot or some kind of thing and maybe even run Windows on top of Android. Maybe run iOS apps on top of Android. Or what about all these crazy ideas? Yes, so I still think some of that is possible. Like getting uh, normal Linux applications to run isn't all that complicated. What's missing is essentially integration between the different graphics stacks. Android uses Surface Flinger, while regular Linux for the most part uses X11. Some distributions are switching to Valent, but neither of those is compatible in a way that you could just uh, connect it into a Surface Flinger. But they're not all that different. They're, they're all based on OpenGL these days. so there's a good chance that uh, at some point someone will come up with a proper solution there. And as for the other operating systems, I don't really see why you would want to do it, but um, if you look at the WineGit repositories, for example, there's already code to support Android. So if you had some Windows applications that were built for the right processor, which is currently rare, you could run them. And in terms of iOS, uh, there's GNU Step, which implements a lot of the APIs, and Swift is open source these days. So if uh, people just implemented a couple of uh, wrappers in between, Should there's a good chance it could do you, work. Do you have time? Should we go to the Steve Jobs Theater? We can go to the Apple headquarters and, and convince them to support open source? They would do no such thing. We can convince them. 
I'm a programmer, not a politician. <laughs> Maybe you should run for Congress or run for kind of like president or something. Don't you think you will have a chance? Because no way. No way. I mean, even if I wanted to, uh, which I don't, there's no way people would vote for someone who looks like me, for someone who talks like me. And I think, <laughs> I think you are. You have the real experience, everyday experience on the ground. You know, <laughs> they are living in another planet. You know what happens, and maybe you can you can make an app, a software that kind of like uh, decides for people what needs to be politic, the politics of the future, right? Yeah, that's right. I call it brainwashing 1.0, and I hear Apple is really interested in putting that on their phones. <laughs> they probably already have it. They just don't admit to it. <laughs> yeah, they have it. Uh, they have uh, control on a lot of Apple fanboy brains. That's for sure. There's right. Too, there's too many of those. How do we? How do we convert them? We need to. It's a good question. I still don't really understand uh, what Apple's appeal is. I mean, their devices look good, but they don't hold up to comparison uh, with other uh, boxes if you look at the technology. I, I did a really cool video with the purism. They have this Debian phone coming out. Uh, they want to get the Debian phone to work. What do, you, do you think there's a good chance it's going to happen? It's going to work? I think um, that it's certainly going to work. But I think it will be hard to convince people to start using it because there's just too many apps that people have come to expect. They just need to have 3,000 customers and they can get it funded. So yeah. it's just 3,000 guys that are want to have a Debian phone, then this is launched. And then who knows, maybe it gets converted into 3 million users. That would be awesome. It would be nice. Uh, I think we need some more of, uh, diversity in the mobile space. And would you like to send a message to all the uh, industry and all the chip makers that they should all join the NARO? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Everyone should join the NARO if you can afford it, of course. <laughs> and uh, not just that, uh, even regardless of whether or not you're joining the NARO, please do open source drivers. They make our life much easier. And please. Don't ignore the, the uh, desktop and laptop market the way it's always been done. I mean, you can see over there that it's possible to do something, so let's do it. And which which uh, which uh, proprietary drivers do you really want to get open source right now? Mali. Mali is probably the biggest pain point because that's in most SOCs and. Uh, it's not even at a point where you can make a display work using pure open source stuff. Can you speak with a, a British accent and send a message to the, the friends at ARM? <laughs> Hello. They already know where I stand on this and a lot of people inside ARM agree, but unfortunately their decision makers aren't there yet. I think there will be a surprise, a Christmas surprise. This year they're going to open source Mali. That would be the best uh, Christmas gift to me ever. Yeah.